Good morning. Welcome to Silver Lake County Methodist Church. My name is Cameron Miller. I'm the pastor, and it is such a great joy to gather with you here on this morning to worship and celebrate um, the life of our Savior, Jesus Christ. As we gather here today, I have a few announcements um, that I want to lift up, and then I'll open the floor. Um, one, if um, you look in your uh, little insert this week, I've got a few things in there. I'm going to be out of the office starting... Tomorrow afternoon, I will be going to, my wife and I will be going to Greece. Uh, we're going to be on a vacation there for uh, 10 days as the trip. We'll be exploring um, Paul's journeys through Greece. So we're going with some people from the conference, about 40 other, well, about 40 total um, people from the conference, and we'll be um, exploring that. We're really excited. So make sure you come back on, I don't know, March 3rd or something, right around there. Uh, I'll be giving my sermon that day. We'll include... Um, lots of stories and pictures and um, times from our adventures in Greece. So we're really excited. So I also ask them for prayers, for travel mercies, for us and for all of us who are going. As um, This is by far the farthest Chris and I have ever gone. Um, and so uh, we've got to figure out how to get a, on an eight and a half hour flight, how that's like. But so that's coming up. And then if there are any um, pastoral emergencies that arises, um, Andrew Connard, the pastor at Susanna Wesley United Methodist Church here in Topeka, um, is going to be, um, or has agreed to fill in for any needs to come up. So his email is in here. Um, and if an emergency arises, I'll leave that, um, his cell phone number with the board so you can contact um, anyone on our board, which we'll have a report from them in a little bit and give some more information there. Um, Bob Webb um, is going to be hosting a funeral planning little session after church on March 10th. Uh, Bob Webb is a funeral director, has been for um, over 30 years now, and has offered to spend some time just if you're interested in kind of learning about the process or you have questions or you're wanting to um, get some stuff figured out. He's happy to um, answer questions and go through um, some of the process that day and start to get stuff set up for you. Um, so I'd really invite you to put that down on your calendar um, for March 10th to join us um, after church. Um, the high school has a play tonight. They're doing Clue, or this afternoon. It's at 2 o'clock. Um, it sounds like last night it went really well. Um, I'm excited to go at two Jacksons um, in it. So if you want to go, it's $8 for adults and 7 for... Um, students um, at the door and so join us in celebrating our community and the work that the high school has put in um, to putting on this production. One more, I know there's a lot this morning. Uh, the city is currently in, actually I got two more. I thought that was one, it's actually two, so bear with me a little bit. The city is in the midst of doing um, a water update for uh, the, it's a national mandate that's come down and so they really need, um, if you're within I guess I don't know exactly if it's just within city limits or with outside, but if you got a um, letter in the mail asking for some information on your water system, please take the time to fill that out. It's going to be really important um, for the city, and so March 15th is the deadline for that. Um, and also, if you get it in by March 15th, you're in the running for free water for, I believe it's a year, um, and so there's an incentive there as well. So please consider um, getting that done and turning that into the city. And then there's a trivia night at Blacksmith um, Event Center coming up this week on the 23rd. Um, the, I know at least the food is going to the Spanish Club. I don't know if the whole thing is or not. Um, but uh, registration is by the 21st. It's teams of four, $24 a person. Um, and so if you're interested in that, um, make sure that you sign up um, and get registered to, for trivia night. It sounds like it'd be fun. I'll be in Greece, so I won't be able to go. But um, other than that, it uh, I think it'll be fun. That's what I have. It's also for the library. It's also for the library. Okay, so the food is for the Spanish Club, and then the, the proceeds from registration go to the library for renovations and stuff. Do we have any other announcements this morning? All right, then if there are no other announcements, I want to wish happy birthday to um, a lot of people. Uh, we wish happy birthday on the 21st to Donna Kampmeyer. Happy birthday. Tyler Thomas's birthday is on the, the 22nd. Amy Bonner's birthday is on the 23rd. 
Sarah Thomas's birthday is also on the 23rd, and Arlene's Web, Arlene Webb's birthday is on the 24th. So happy birthday um, to all of um, our members this week. Do we have any other birthdays or anniversaries in the coming week? Francis has got his hand up. If anybody's interested, or even if you're not, Jane and I are going to have our 37th wedding anniversary on the 21st. Exciting, how, congratulations. 31st, you said? 37th. 37th. Wow, yes, that is amazing. Congratulations. Any others? If not, then I'd invite you to rise and body your spirit and join us in our call to worship. Come, all you people, come and worship. Come, all creatures of the earth, come and worship. Remember the covenant and be thankful. God remembers the covenant and God will save us. Please join me in the opening hymn, God who lo whose love is reigning over us. Change of hymn. Um, so Kathy um, and Jensen are both sick right now, so they're not able to be here today, so we pray for um, them to feel better. Our opening song is going to be Here I Am to Worship, so please join me um, in singing.
please join me in the unison prayer. God of pathways, you show us how we should walk, yet we forget our connection with one another and think that we are the center of the universe. We wander from your paths of truth into paths of deceit and pride. Forgive us and lead us back into the arms of your love. Amen. We gather now in a time of sharing together in our joys and concerns. Um, I want to lift up prayers for um, Kansas City and all of those who um, were affected by the shooting at the rally this week. Um, we pray for the family of the woman who lost her lives and all of those um, who were injured physically and mentally. Um, and we also just say um, another prayer and uh, a pray for action um, to prevent these um, horrific acts to happen in the future. Do we have other joys or concerns this morning? I have a concern about my sister, uh, Marilyn, who probably Eldon and Gerald are the only ones that remember her. Um, she lives in Frontenac with her disabled son, and she is going through an extremely rough time and may have to move up here where I can help her. So I'd appreciate prayer. Yeah, so prayers for um, Winnie's sister, Marilyn. Um, she's going through a rough time and may, did you say may have to move into a, to a home or some, to get some additional help? And so we just pray um, for Marilyn and um, her, her time and hopefully uh, to make it through this rough time and if there's a transition um, into a new place of living uh, to help her with that. So we pray for, for your sister and for you, Winnie. Um, ours is kind of both. It's mostly celebration, but on Thursday, uh, we'll go to the hospital and we will have our baby. So, you know, we hope everything goes really well with that, but I'm sure it will. Very exciting. Yes. Prayers for you for the joy of new life and the joy of new, uh, new brother or sister, um, a new child, a sister of a new sister. Um, which will be very exciting, and uh, we just pray that all goes well, and we will definitely be praying with you um, on Thursday as uh, you are induced and as um, you have um, a sweet little girl. Do we have other joys or concerns? If not, then I'd invite you to join me in a moment of prayer. Holy and loving God, we come before you today basking in the awe of your holiness, in the awe of your power, and in the awe of your love. We gather here and we are reminded of the ways in which we have made mistakes. The ways that we come today not sure of, of what has happened, not sure of what we've done, knowing that we have wronged you or others. During this season of Lent especially, we are reminded that uh, we are sinners and that we need your help, your forgiveness, and your transformative, reconciling love to bring us into right relationship with you and others. And so, Lord, we just take a moment now to um, lift up those places that we fall short, those places in which we put ourselves in front of you, those places in which we do harm instead of good. Lord, we also are reminded that when we lift up to you the ways in which we fall short, that you receive them and that you offer us forgiven because you are a forgiving and loving God. Help us to continue to live life as people who, excuse me, people who are forgiven, people who live in the light of Christ. 
We also lift up prayers today for um, those prayers which we have lifted up. We lift up prayers for um, gun violence and those afflicted by it. We pray for you to work within our hearts and our hands and our feet and our voice to make change in this world, to bring about a more peaceful place where we can live in harmony with one another. We pray for family members who are undergoing um, transitions and hard times in life. We pray for friends and family who are dealing with cancer and um, the side effects of that. And Lord, we bring about great joy for new life in the world. We pray for, um, for birth to be a, a moment of holiness and for birth to be a moment of healthiness. We pray all of this in the name of Jesus Christ who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and as our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. I invite you to join in our next hymn, which is um, Turn Your Eyes Upon Jesus, number 349 in the hymnal, and we'll sing it two times through. Our script. Oh, that's right. Scripture's next. You're right. Sorry. I see my time to do. <laughs> Our scripture reading this morning comes from Genesis in the 17th chapter, verses 1 through 8 and 15 through 16. Please rise in body or spirit for the reading of the scripture. When Abram was 99 years old, the Lord appeared to Abram and said to him, I am God Almighty. Walk before me and be blameless, and I will make my covenant between me and you, and will make you exceedingly numerous. Then Abram fell on his face, and God said to him, As for me, this is my covenant with you. You shall be the ancestor of a multitude of nations. No longer shall your name be Abram, but your name shall be Abraham, for I have made you the ancestor of a multitude of nations. I will make you exceedingly fruitful, and I will make nations of you, and kings shall come from you. I will establish my covenant between me and you and your offspring after you throughout their generations for an everlasting covenant to be God to you and to your offspring after you. And I will give to you and to your offspring after you the land where you are now an alien, all the land of Canaan, for a perpetual holding, and I will be their God. God said to Abraham, As for Sarai, your wife, you shall not call her Sarai, but Sarah shall be her name. I will bless her and also give you a son by her. I will bless her, and she shall give rise to nations. Kings of people shall come from her. May God add a blessing to the reading, hearing, and understanding of God's word. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. If there are any um, children at this time who would like to go to Sunday school, 
What was that? Oh, yes. Let's do that right now because I forgot about that earlier. Um, we're going to take a step back a little bit to announcement time. Um, I was supposed to do, I mentioned it and then I forgot about it. The board met this past week um, and so we are going to, uh, Ashley's going to share some announcements with you or some, I can't even think right now, whatever they're called, uh, some things that happened. I'm going to give you a rundown of our February meeting. That's it's, a really good way to put it. It was uh, <laughs> it'll be short and sweet. Um, we did welcome a couple of new members, uh, Steve Brennan and Scott Vandevelde. So round of applause. Thank you for stepping up to do that for us. Um, so along with voting those in, we also voted to keep Kimberlyn Ewell as our trustees chair. We discussed our Christmas service, it was well attended, and we especially appreciated the inclusion of the Washburn singers. Um, for Easter, we were talking about trying to do something new for Monday Tuesday. We're thinking about doing a dinner and maybe a skit, so if you'd be interested in participating in that somehow, please let one of us know, primarily Cameron. Um, we discussed our hopes for 2024. Our biggest thing is we want to continue being of service, of good service to our community. And right now there's a unique opportunity to really help people with the shutting down of our local grocery store. There's several people out there who are probably going to have a harder time accessing groceries or a grocery store. There's several people who would just walk to Wieners and that's no longer going to be an option. So if you know of anyone that might need help with that, let someone, again, some, maybe one of the board members or again, just Pastor Cameron know and we'll see if we can connect them with someone who can help them. Um, we also wanted to discuss that we might be changing how we do VBS a little bit. We're talking about maybe joining forces with another local church and then maybe sponsoring ourselves. Just a really fun uh, kickoff for VBS. Um, like uh, renting the Rossville pool and having you know, a, a short sermon and let the kids of the community play and get ready for VBS. Um, we also went over the financial report for 2023. Uh, Kathy couldn't be there, so we missed out on her because she does such a great job with doing all that for us. But we did come in under budget for 2023, which is great, and we were able to fulfill our mission shares. Um, and then one last thing, we, uh, had a lower attendance at bingo this year than usual, but we were still able to raise a tidy sum for the youth group. Um, and again, can we give Jenny a round of applause? Jenny Miller's done such a wonderful job with that for several years. She's done that for several years and she is ready to step down. So if you are ready to step up, <laughs> let us know because those are some pretty big shoes to fill, but I'm sure we've got multiple very capable people who can do that. And then our next meeting will be March 20th, if you wanted to come and be a part of the meeting or if you had anything you wanted to share. All right, thank you guys. Thank you. I did want to say um, just a little bit more about our finances. So we did come up, um, we were $1,000 positive this year, um, but our budget was, uh, we were still about 30,000 away from where we would want our budget to be. Um, so we brought our expenses down to kind of meet the needs of our giving, but just to kind of keep you informed on that, uh, the budget that we have proposed that um, would allow us to do um, all of the ministry that we are um, hoping to do in the coming year was about 30000 above what we brought in. Um, so we were able to keep our expenses in a reasonable place, um, but there is continued room um, for, for growth there to, to continue to see vitality of ministry. I just want you to be aware of kind of where um, we're falling in that. But it is um, a wonderful opportunity opportunity that we're able to to be at a place where we're not uh, running a deficit in the year and that is a great blessing to this church. If you ever have any questions um, about um, things that happen at the board or you have anything that you would like to share with the board, you can always contact me um, or we have the first little part of our meeting devoted to um, listening to ideas or thoughts or concerns that you all have um, on meeting days as well. So always feel free to reach out to me um, with any questions that you might have. Or any member of, of the board, they'd be more than happy, I'm sure, to um, share with you as I put them all on the spot and say that for them. So now we'll jump into the sermon. Or no, now I want to invite our kids to go to Sunday school if anyone would like to um, attend Sunday school this week. So on Wednesday, um, we began this season of the church year called Lent. 
Lent is a period of preparation that begins before Easter and is a time where we are to examine ourselves and prepare for Easter morning when we get to, to rise and celebrate, or we get to celebrate in the, in the risen Savior. Throughout Lent, we will be using a, a book by Susan Robb. It's called Remember. And through this book, we are going to be exploring together some of the covenants which God has made with humanity throughout history. So we're going to look at covenants made with Abraham, covenants between Moses and Israel, covenants between David, covenants between the prophets, and Jesus' new covenant to all of creation. So I'm really looking forward to this Lenten season as we get to explore God's action throughout time and God's continual promise to us, even today. So today we are going to start by exploring the covenant between God and Abraham. But before we get into Abraham's story, I want to talk just a little bit about what I mean by a covenant. A covenant, in a basic sense, is an agreement between two or more people. But it's an agreement that is not merely a formal document. It's not a contract. But it's an agreement made in relationship with one another for the mutual benefit for all parties involved. When you think of covenants today, the things that come into my mind are covenants that have to do primarily with land, primarily with property that we own. You may enter into a covenant with your neighbor um, to make sure that you have access to a road that's on their land or that your driveway may butt up against their land, and so you want to make sure that you have a covenant um, with them to use that space. Or maybe it's an HOA covenant where you agree to abide by a particular set of rules for a community that hold people accountable for different things. This view of covenants is more contractual than what we experience and what we understand in the biblical sense. Throughout Scripture, covenants um, are, are, very, uh, are all over the place, and especially covenants between God and humanity. These covenants are built around love for one another and the world. One covenant, which actually we've already looked at a couple weeks ago, was the covenant God made with humanity through Noah after the flood. God placed a bow in the sky as a reminder of God's covenant to never wipe out the entirety of the earth. One of the covenants many people partake in during their lives that we have the closest relationship to is that of the covenant of marriage. Marriage isn't just a legal binding of two people together. It's a promise made by two individuals to love each other, to share togetherness, uh, together in all of the struggles and joy of life, and unite as one. It's a deep connection and a promise between a couple and God to respect and love one another through thick or thin. When we celebrate together the covenant of marriage, it is more than just the signing of a piece of paper. It is a reminder that two people are intertwining their lives together. They become one, and in the presence of God, they are united. So together with God and community, a couple vows to share together in the promises of marriage. They exchange rings as a sign of this covenant. And then they get a marriage certificate, which really is just a piece of paper for the government to recognize a union. But the covenant of marriage is a bond which fully unites two people in the bonds of love and respect for one another and God. This is really the depth of covenant that we're talking about. It's, it's not the piece of paper. It's a full change of ourselves in relationship with others, and particularly in this sense, in our relationship with God and humanity. Another thing to remember about the covenants between God and humanity is that while sometimes we may not uphold our end of the covenant, we may not always do the right thing, God always upholds God's end of the covenant. So even when we seem to just take a covenant and shred it up and throw it in the river and let it dissipate, God is holding on and being faithful to the covenant which God has made with humanity. Because God made this covenant in the fullness of God's love, which is everlasting and never broken. 
So with that in mind, we take this idea of covenant now as we explore um, Abraham and God's covenant and that, how that extends to all of humanity. The story of Abraham in the scripture actually picks up where we left off in our last sermon series. So the last sermon series, we were exploring Genesis 1 through 11 and kind of the creation of the world and bringing the world into its state of brokenness. So we ended in verse 11 with the Tower of Babel and people being spread out throughout the world and languages scattered as humanity was trying to focus too much on themselves. And then right away, then in Genesis 12, then we start to get the story of Abram, who would later become Abraham, as we heard in our scripture reading today. God, through Abraham, is seeking to reunite humanity with God's full self. So God reaches out to, to Abram um, and does so in calling Abraham to go from where he is to this new place, to follow God blindly, where he will then make a covenant with, with Abram for all of humanity that his descendants will be as numerous as the stars in the sky or the grains of sand on the ground. God says to Abram in our scripture today, And I will make my covenant between me and you and will make you exceedingly numerous. Then Abraham fell on his face and God said to him, As for me, this is my covenant with you. You shall be the ancestor of a multitude of nations. No longer shall your name be Abram, but your name shall be Abraham, for I have made you an ancestor of a multitude of nations. I will make you exceedingly fruitful, and I will make nations of you. And kings shall come from you, and I will establish my covenant between me and you and your offspring after you throughout their, their generations for an everlasting covenant to be God to you and to your offspring after you. And I will give to you and to your offspring after you the land where you are now an alien, all the land of Canaan for a perpetual holding, and I will be their God. This is such an important covenant in the story of Scripture. This is a covenant in which we see that the God changes Abram's name to Abraham, which reflects really the power of this covenant. It brings Abram, whose name in Hebrew means father, into Abraham, which means father of the multitudes or father of many nations. It is a covenant to be with God's people throughout all of time and to be together in the joy of love of one another. This promise in which God makes this covenant, which God makes with Abraham, is one that he says is not just for you, but it is for your descendants, it is for generations, it is for all the world forever and ever. And while God knows that humanity will break this covenant time and time again of looking and having relationship with God, God will hold fast, providing the world with reminders of this covenant and new signs of God's love along the way. Abraham's story is the be is begins beginning with God's call is to pack up everything and to move into this new land which God would show him. Abram was given no destination, no reasoning, just a command to go and follow God's call. And Abraham did just that, and in continuing to follow God's call, he found God's favor through his faithfulness which brought him into the land of Canaan, where God forged this world-changing covenant to bring restoration to a broken humanity through a covenant relationship between God and humanity, which we most fully experienced in the life of Jesus Christ. The multitude of the nations were united and by Emmanuel, God with us. Jesus invites us to follow him in a new way of living and to do so with all that we have. So just as Abram was invited to follow God into the wilderness, Jesus is calling, calling us to follow him into new reality. The one where the descendants of Abraham are just the beginning of God's saving grace. Jesus invited all of humanity into this covenant of new life and restoration. 
The story of Abraham is really a story of a new beginning for the world. In the beginning of Genesis, as I talked about, we had that beginning of the brokenness and the need for divine intervention in the way of humanity because we were just continuing to make the wrong decision again and again and again and again. So God, finding a new way to relate with humanity, came to Abram and said, Abraham, through you I am going to make a new covenant. I'm going to make a new covenant that I am going to bless your people and I will always be your God. I will provide for you path to salvation. I will provide for you a path that does not include the destruction and the brokenness of life, but a new life restored and made new in me. This is the promise that we continue to see unraveled throughout all of Scripture as people are trying to find new ways of understanding and relating with God to be made whole in the fullness of our Creator. But again and again, we continue to not hold up to our end of the covenant. We dropped the ball, we threw God aside, and we put idols in God's place. In doing so, God continued to reach out and make new covenants, which are the ones that we will explore continually or again and again throughout this sermon series, where we will explore the different ways in, gets, in which God has called humanity back to a loving relationship with God and each other. And so Jesus, when Jesus came, he lived a life where he was calling all of God's people to come and be united, to be together. That the multitude of nations, which God had promised Abraham, would come back together, would be reunited, and would expand be beyond just Abraham's lineage, but to the lineage of all of humanity, back to the original lineage, which is that we are made in God's image. And so this covenant that we are a part of is a covenant in which invites us to be in relationship with God and in relationship with others. To recognize that in the midst of life, God is always with us and that we are God's covenant people. We do this through the stories that we heard of Abraham and his call and his devotion to God. And also through the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus Christ, which calls us to be in relationship with the least of these, with our brothers and sisters, and with our neighbors. This is the covenant in which we live into. In which we go where God is calling us to go. We act as God is calling us to act. And we are the hands and feet which God is calling us to be. And we love each other as we love all of ourselves. This is the relationship which God gives us through Abraham's covenant. This covenant was not just a covenant between God and Abraham, but it was a covenant between God and you and God and all of humanity for a new way of living, a new way of understanding the world in which everyone is seen, heard, recognized, and loved. And so we, as a covenant people, as God's people, as, as Abraham's people... We have a special place to follow and live out this commandment or this covenant. To live out this covenant in all that we do and all that we are to bring about a new world where people experience the joy and the love of Jesus Christ and the transformative power of God's might. And so that is the covenant of Abraham. That is the covenant which kicks off the whole story of the Bible and what kicks off the story of restoration and our need for something more. And in that, our need is followed up with God's promise to always be with us. To always give us the grace that we need. To always extend a hand when we are in times of struggle and when we are in times of the greatest joy. This is God's covenant with you and me. Amen. So as we gather today in this time of offering, I want to share with you one way that you may not know that you can maybe be um, or have a little more agency in, in your giving and take some different advantages of some giving practices. So if you have a traditional IRA and are over, I believe, the age of 70 and a half, you are required to make um, distributions from your IRA on an annual basis. You have to take a certain amount um, because that's what the account was there for. 
Part of this um, way that you can do this is by giving directly from your IRA to the church. And when you do this, one of the big benefits of this is that you don't pay taxes on any of that money that you donate from your IRA to the church. And so if you have an IRA and you're withdrawing money from it and then giving to the church, there are ways which you could actually give more to the church without changing how much you are spending or getting at all. And so if this is something you're interested in, I would truly invite you to, can, to talk to um, who's ever in charge of your IRA, your accountant, and just say, hey, this is something I'm interested in. How can we set up direct giving between my account and the church? And um, you can then increase your giving for, no, um, uh, for nothing on you the amount of taxes that you would have paid. So um, if there was going to be 15% tax taken out, let's say on... Um, $1,000, you can increase your, your giving um, by $150 without having to do um, anything. And so these are ways that we can be more um, responsible of the gifts which God has given us. And there are, there are some other ways um, you may have to um, help you with um, not paying taxes on that income and, and giving it to the church or to other organizations. So I invite you to just have conversations. But as faithful stewards of, of God's resources, this is the one of the ways in which we can be faithful stewards um, of the resources which God has given us. And so as, as we gather here today, I just invite us to consider the impact that our gifts have on the life of the church as our ushers come forward and receive our tithes and offerings. Holy and gracious God, we lift up to you today these gifts for your blessing, for you to use them for the betterment of your kingdom and for us to be your covenant people, people called to love you and love others and to be reminded that you are with us even in the midst of our deepest struggles. Bless these gifts and use them for your power in this world that we may be your hands and feet. It is in your holy and loving name that we pray. Amen. I invite you to remain standing as you were able and join in our closing hymn, How Deep the Father's Love for Us, which will be projected. How deep the Father's love for us, how vast beyond all
last two lines one more time. But this I know with all my heart, his wounds have paid my ransom. As we go forth today, we go forth remembering that we are God's people, people in a covenant relationship with God to go out into this world and to love one another and to be reminded that God loves us and is with us all the days of our lives. That as we live and as we love, we get to share with people this story of God, this story of Jesus Christ, which brings together a multitude of nations in one, one together in love for each other and the world around us. And so go forth as these covenant people, seeking to unite humanity in the constant relationship of love with one another. Service has ended. You may go in peace. Thanks be to God. Amen.